First of all, congratulations on the film. Um, I saw it yesterday and I really, really enjoyed it. It was brilliant and very magical. Well, thank you. My first question was, um, how did this project come about? Um, what were its beginnings? Um, I know that you've worked a lot in TV before. Well, I was out, I was sent the script when I was out in Africa filming Generation Kill. I just oh, really? had a day out okay. there. Um, restaging the moment when the American Marines go over the border into mm -hmm. Iraq and I came in, washed all the sand off me and sat down to read it and was completely transported mm -hmm. by it and I really connected with the material. I think firstly because of the character of Mrs Green, although it's loosely set mm -hmm. in the Second World War, to me she's mm -hmm. a very modern woman, she's trying to have a job, look after her children, mm -hmm. deal with her husband being away, worrying mm -hmm. about money. Um, looking after the old lady in the village and um, trying to keep all those balls in the air and um, so I felt an immediate connection with her and then also I thought it was such a fantastic emotional story mm. that uh, I'd loved the first movie but I thought this went even further that it, and it took me back to classic children's films like The Railway Children yeah, or The Sound of Music mm -hmm. um, and so there were lots of reasons for wanting to do it. You mentioned the first film. I was just wondering what the challenge... Obviously, that was a hugely popular film. I wondered if you'd seen the film when you received the script and what the challenges were involved with making a sequel. I went to see the first movie with my kids. Oh, really? um, we went down to Shepherd's Bush and saw it at The View, and I mm. uh, really enjoyed it. Mm. And obviously, the challenge of a sequel is keeping it the same but making it different. Mm. And I saw ways that I could move it forward. I mean, I think this is a more emotional story than the mm -hmm. first film, and it takes you on a big emotional journey but I also saw that I could do very special things with the magic I'd worked in CGI mm -hmm. on, on Generation Kill mm -hmm. and I saw huge opportunities for big CGI mm -hmm. sequences there that would be a lot of fun and um, I wanted to keep the sense of colour from the first film but use it differently so I brought in my design team who I'd worked with on things before Simon mm -hmm. Elliott the designer did Bleak House with me mm -hmm. and um, my cinematographer I've worked with for years and years um, so hopefully it's got a lot of uh, the similar um, sort of icon aspects mm -hmm. of Nanny McPhee from the first film, but um, feels like a different film in its own right. You mentioned Generation Kill and Bleak House, and obviously I've got to ask, uh, all of those three have very different subject matters and paint very different worlds. So you've got Dickensian in London, War Zone, and um, of course this very magical kind of quite emotive world. Um, how do you feel? Like, how do you feel about transitioning from all these very different subject matters? As a filmmaker, I love flexing different mm. cinematic muscles. You know, my father was Hungarian and he spoke seven languages. And each time he spoke a different language, he'd become a slightly different person. And I think I'm probably a bit like that as a filmmaker, mm. that there's a chameleon in me, that I love moving from doing a television series about war to creating a magical world of a nanny. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's all really challenging, but I guess at the heart of, of all my work and what draws it together is great scripts and, mm -hmm. and great performances, and, it, and it's all about telling the stories of wonderful characters. Mm -hmm. And I was also wondering, obviously it's a family film and you must have worked with, you worked with child actors and stars as well, of course, that's what the cast is made <laughs> up of. Um, and what were, the, what were the sort of challenges involved with that? It's very different doing this from doing Generation Kill, where I had <laughs> I can a imagine. cast of, of unknown actors, really, and yeah. some real people. I had some real Marines in Generation Kill who'd never been in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a big change going from that to doing this with big movie stars and, and lots of children. Um, I think the biggest worry for me was what the child performances would be like, and mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time casting them and working in rehearsal with them, and I'm really, really pleased about it. Um, and I guess that, you know, the work I've done has been very diverse in Bleak House. I'd worked with a lot of big actors, so I, I was used to that. Mm. Um, but, you know, it was just thrilling, really, to be working with people who are at the top of their game. You know, A-list actors like Maggie Gyllenhaal, Maggie Smith, mm -hmm. Emma Thompson. Ray Fiennes came in just for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Ewan McGregor just came in yeah. for a couple of days. How lucky am I? You know, I had some great career advice once from Tony Garnett, the producer. He said to me, work with the best and you'll get better. And uh, <laughs> this, lot of, this company right. has certainly raised my game. As a female film director, obviously this is the year when Catherine Bigelow was the first woman to ever win Best Director at the Oscars. And um, also in light of the fact that there's a statistic that says that only 7% of directors are actually women. How do you feel it's affected your career path? 
think maybe being a woman meant that it took me a long time to get my first feature. You know, I'm nearly 50 years old. I've been making films since I was eight years old, and mm. it's taken me a long time to get the break. I've had a very solid career doing television. And I think if you look at the people who had BAFTA and Oscar nominations this year, they're all women in their 40s and 50s. There's mm. no real youngsters out there in, in the way that you'd look at the men who've been nominated. Mm. So I think, you know, pro women have to work twice as hard to get the recognition. But um, hopefully we're at a watershed moment. You know, I've been emailing Catherine Bigelow. I really I'm <laughs> so thrilled um, that, that she won the Oscar and the BAFTA. And, um, you know, she said very nice things about Generation Kill. So hopefully that glass ceiling's been shattered now and it'll be easier for the next group of women coming through. But, you know, if you look at the comparable people who'd, who'd done similar TV work to me, I, I think the men got their breaks into features quicker and really the big thing that transformed things for me um, was directing Generation Kill, a huge series with an all-male cast yeah. and a lot of action. traditionally male subject matter. You know, in the way that, that Catherine got um, recognition for doing The Hurt Locker. Um, that seemed to mean a lot to people that we took on these uh, all-male subjects, whereas people don't ask those questions about a man directing a film about women. You know, yeah. hey, but it should be a level playing field. I think anyone should like be able to... Like a costume drama or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, you know, um, any, any director should be able to take on anything, regardless of their, their sex or their race. Well, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>